Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. So this is The Shadow, issue number one from DC Comics, and this came out in 1973. I was thinking about maybe doing a review on the Archie comic Shadow series. That series kind of blows. So not only did they make Lamont Cranston, which is the Shadow's alter ego, blonde, but then they also, in the issue two and onwards, they put him in like a green superhero suit and made him fight crime as like almost like a Superman-like character. It was pretty terrible. I don't know why you would take the Shadow, who's, you know, the trench coat wearing, scarf around his face, fedora, double guns, akimbo, and put him in a green spandex suit and have him fight crime. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I decided, eh, let's do the DC version, because the DC 1973 uh, issues are pretty damn good. Which is really a shame, because uh, the newer DC stuff with the Shadow, where he was like doing the crossover with Batman, were just terrible. Because uh, I mentioned it before, but it was basically just, let's prop up Batman by disparaging the Shadow constantly. It was it was bad. So the Shadow, really popular pulp character. Started off as the host for an old-time radio drama. So think of him more like the, like the Crypt Keeper in that regard. He was like a host for like an anthology series. And he became so popular with listeners that he ended up getting his own series uh, where they kind of fleshed out his character. And um, he's basically Batman, or should I say the Batman is basically him. So he's a billionaire, playboy, man of out town. By day, goes by the name Lamont Cranston. And then by night, he is the vigilante known as the Shadow. So yeah, here in this series, we have his little group. There's Margot Lane, there's Harry, and there's Chevy. So uh, yeah, this is the Shadow in the doom puzzle so we start off on the book and waterfront where some never do wells are taking care of business and they hear the evil laugh and i'm not even going to attempt to try to do the shadow laugh because i cannot but the shadow has a very iconic laugh it's awesome highly recommend listening to the old time radio series uh it's like one of his trademarks just that i am the shadow and the shadow can only be heard but never seen <laughs> And the shadow appears, guns blazing, pulls out his pistol, starts blasting away. That's one of the things I loved about the shadow is that back in the old times, like the pulp days, heroes had no problem killing people. <laughs> but that's why I love the shadow. The shadow's like, I don't give a crap. I'm just going to shoot everybody. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he starts blasting away. He kills one guy. Another guy tries to make his escape and he grabs him and throws him off the catwalk and he falls to his death. So yeah, the shadow just murdering people and uh he snatches basically a note from one of their hands because they're they're broke in while they're coming up with some kind of plan and uh he hops into a car that shrevy is driving and in the back sees margot lane he shows her this message and it just looks like a regular slogan when the shadow is like no it's a it's a coded message and there's actually a little note that says you know have you cracked the code if not you can you know go down to the bottom and you can find out what the code is and so, yeah, if you actually scroll down to the bottom, uh, it says that the solution to the message was three words long. This told him to read only every third word. Thus deciphered, the letter goes, gun, arrive, water, 10, building, across, avenue. That is, take guns to the building across the street from water and 10th. Got it? So I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was pretty cool how they, uh, they had a coded message and then, you know, at the bottom you can find out. I don't know, I like little things like that, like just little activities for the readers to kind of do. So anyways, Lamont Craston, the shadow, shows up with Margot Lane at this uh, building. Meanwhile, he calls his partner, Harry, and asks him to go check out, uh, basically stand on the street corner, and uh, something's going to go down there. This is kind of different from the radio serial series. So the radio dramas, uh, The Shadow doesn't really have a part. Well, he has Margot Lane. Other than that, he doesn't really have like a team. I guess in this series he does. But yeah, he doesn't really have a good group. Basically what he does is he conscripts people to, to jobs. Uh, it's usually people that he's either saved in the past or people who have like 
committed some kind of crime and rather than arrest them, he kind of lets them go. But in return, they have to do him favors. But these are like low level like crimes, like nothing like, like not like murder or, or anything more serious, you know. But yeah, and here he has he has a crack team and he sends Harry to go wait on the corner. And this was the one that I thought was kind of weird because I'm like, if you know something's going to go down, why didn't he go himself? But basically, a armored truck arrives, armored police truck escorting some prisoners. And um, these thugs with Tommy guns show up and basically shoot out the tires of the police car. And Harry starts shooting back at the guys. But as he does, this hooded man comes up and knocks him out. And I'm like, you know what? This hooded dude like it's such a simple design but it's so cool looking it's kind of a shame because he doesn't really appear again or if he does he appears as just a regular grunt with the hat, a fedora instead of his hood like this is the only time he we see him with the hood on which is like i don't know i, I didn't really care for that i was like i like i like the, this little hooded look it, it's it's so simple but it's just it's just it's just looks so cool so yeah meanwhile back at the building uh, Shrevy shows up and basically tells Lamont, like, hey, like, I, I, I was watching Harry, you know, I dropped him off at the corner, like you asked, and then I kept an eye on him from a distance, and, uh, he got nabbed, like, he got kidnapped. It was too, like, they were too far for me to, to help him, but I was able to tell them, and I know where they're going. So, Lamont hops in, and we cut to Harry tied to a tree, and, uh, the thugs are basically, like, threatening him and stuff like that when we... We get the, the shadow laugh, the iconic shadow laugh again. And the shadow shows up, and he just starts knocking everybody out with his bare fists. And he saves Harry, and he tells Harry to take all the guys, you know, to the police, lock them up. But uh, this guy in the orange suit, I'm going to take him. And he basically takes him to his hideout, where he ties him down, and he shows him his ring. And the ring is something that he uses to basically kind of hypnotize people that's where i'm looking for he, he hypnotizes uh his enemies and he gets them to basically spill their guts so he brainwashes this guy and this guy kind of spills his guts and explains that like a lot of these uh steel beams used in the navy were taken along with the uh, stolen ship plans and uh, a seaman and lamont starts putting more of the pieces of the puzzle together and so the next day he shows up at the bank where uh, he greets Osgood Bamber and he's like you know hey like I've heard there's rumors of big excitement going down the streets and Osgood is like oh well there's basically there's a lot of uh, we're shipping this worn out currency that's you know it's money that's too used up to be any of any good I'm supervising the transfer myself and Lamont's like well like isn't that quite the temptation for a thief like aren't you worried he's like uh, Osgood's like no like the shipment will be in armored cars guarded by a convoy of soldiers and only the boys in Washington and I know the route that the shipment takes. Trans uh, the transportation is going to be it's going to be safe. So later that night, the currency is being transported and it's starting to cross this bridge when we see these hoodlums with dynamite. And they're going to blow up the bridge. But right before they can blow up the bridge, we see the shadow's auto gyro, which is basically half helicopter, half plane. And... Um, yeah, he's, he's used this in uh, plenty of comics, not just uh, the DC version, but he also used it in uh, the original 1940 Shadow comics. And so they shoot down the gyro, but they hear some evil laughter, and the shadow appears, and he takes these guys out. He punches and knocks out some of them. One of them is about to shoot the shadow when he gets shot in the back and falls off the bridge, and we see Margot Lane, and she has appeared and I'm, a get, I'm guessing another gyro because this one doesn't have any bullet holes in it. But yeah, like the shadow basically tells like, hey, you know, nice marksmanship, but I could have taken him out easily. Margo's like, well, like, you know, is our work finished? And he's like, no, there's still one more thing that we got to deal with. So he has Margo Lane fly him up in auto gyro and he's checking his watch, making sure he, you know, he's like, you know, it's going to happen any minute now. And basically what he piece together was that the steel stolen ship plans and the seamen was taken so that they can build a submarine and the plan was that they're gonna blow up the bridge so that the convoy falls into the water and then the submarine will come and pick up the cargo 
and that's how they're going to get all the uh, the currency, the the used money. And I was just kind of thinking, you know, what if like you blow up the bridge and the car falls in the water and the water seeps in and basically ruins all your money? Like this wasn't a very thought out plan. It would have made more sense if it was like gold bars, you know, like that 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 would make sense. Or maybe like um, I don't know what they're called, but the if they made the, like the currency plates, like the plates used to actually print money, like maybe if you had those, but it just said like used currency. Actually, you know what? The fact that they said used currency, maybe they were talking about plates and the plates are just too used up to be of any good. I don't know. It's not really explained. It seems more like they're talking about like paper money. That's just like too old to use, but maybe they're talking about plates. So maybe this plan actually was pretty good. Either way, that was their plan. They're going to blow up the bridge. Cargo falls into the water, submarine picks it up. So the shadow decides, you know what? I ain't having that. Like I already stopped the guy from blowing up the bridge and now I'm gonna blow you guys up. And he drops a bunch of like what they call death bombs, but they're, they're depth chargers. And he drops them into the water from his auto gyro and blows up the submarine. And the submarine basically has to surface because it's damaged and more of the hooligans come out and the shadow, you know, drops in on them knocks him out, ties him up, and disappears just as the uh, Coast Guard, like the police boats are arriving. And then Marco's like, all right, we got everybody. And Shadow's like, nope, not yet. We still got one more person. So he so he rush, rushes back to the city where Osgood is rushing out of his mansion and running towards the taxi. And he hops in. And Osgood's like, you know, to the railroad station quickly. Like, I gotta leave. And the Shadow is the, uh, the driver. So then the Shadow's like, I know it was you, Osgood, because you told Lamont Cranston, which is himself, but he's not going to give away his identity, obviously. Like, only you knew the route the shipment was taking, and you knew where it was going to be at six months ago, so you had everything planned out. Uh, you're the mastermind behind this whole robbery, and I foiled it. Osgood pulls out his gun. He's like, I'm not going to suffer the humiliation of a trial. I'm going to kill you first. And then we have the cool line that uh, the shadow always used to say in his uh, old time radio dramas, the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. And he, uh, he takes out Osgood and we just get his laugh as he drives off. So yeah, now that's the shadow issue number one from DC Comics 1973. It was awesome. That like, really did capture the, the, the shadow uh, character. I loved it. A uh, great series. If anyone was a fan of the, the Shadow, I highly recommend the DC run, the 1973 DC run. The original Shadow Comics 1940s run was also really good, but that one is really short. Um, like I've done a video of that series already. It's basically like an anthology where we have like about six pages of the Shadow and then we have other pulp characters like Doc Savage and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, ignore the Archie comics. That one was terrible. That one uh, basically just uses the shadow name, but that's kind of it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you guys think. If you guys have any recommendations for comics, old or new, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll probably be doing more comic book stuff. I want to do like maybe retro stuff. Just like retro reviews, comic books, anime, maybe old movies. I don't know. I kind of want to branch out this channel and do more than just uh, just less plays in comic and manga reviews. So maybe I'll, I'll do like TV shows and movies. We'll see. But tell me what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.